she put them in a box, our phone and our car keys. Oh, and um, cause sometimes people like, car keys. yeah. Cause it like, I know. And again, Uh-oh. I was like, why, why, you, why you need my car keys? begins a hundred percent. I was thinking that. So I, and I, after- and then she said, and actually we do a key party afterwards. <laughs> Welcome to guys. We- Greetings fuckers. Happy 2024. How you doing? Where you been? Wear a helmet. Wear your seatbelt. Welcome to a brand new spanking episode of Guys We Fucked. It's the anti-slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. So this is going to be a solo episode of me, Corinne, and Mikey. Uh, So before we get into it, let's get some dates up top. Okay? Yeah. So you've already been to Corinne's New Year's show. Great to see you. Hope you had fun. <laughs> um, and then- I'm So happy you could make it. Yeah, so it's very, happy. very thrilled. So it was sold out. It was a huge smash. We were recording this early, so no idea, but I'm I'm pretty psychic, so I'm going to say yes. Uh, and then uh, you could see Corinne and I performing together on the same stage in New York City, Thursday, February 1st at the MasterCard Midnight Theater for the very first Guys We Fucked live in New York in uh, 2024. 2024, yeah. And then in Los Angeles on Valentine's Day, February 14th, Corinne and I are going to be doing Guys We Fucked the Experience, the live show uh, at the Comedy Store. So you're going to want to get tickets. Uh, links uh, to all those are in our bio. And uh, I'm headlining a couple dates coming up. If you're listening to this the day it comes out, tonight, New Brunswick, New Jersey, I'm at the Stress Factory headlining. Uh, Hopefully people come to that. Please come. Wait What is my new podcast that I co-host with Daniel Pinchback about aliens, ghosts, psychedelics. And we're having our first kickoff show January 20th, which is a Saturday at MCM Productions where we film the show. It's going to be a live show, live podcast with special guest John Ronson. And I highly encourage, we don't have a ticket link yet. Maybe by the time you hear this, there will be. Check my bio, check the link tree bio at Christina Hutch. Um, but we really encourage people to buy tickets who have had uh, experiences with those three categories. The afterlife, psychic powers of some sort. Uh, have you seen UFOs? Have you been abducted? I want to fucking know, okay? Are you psychic? Let's go. Share it. Uh, and then Springfield, Missouri, April 22nd through the 23rd. March. March. What the fuck? <laughs> What is going on with me? <laughs> you uh, you know what? up your own date. You know what it is? <laughs> I haven't fucking ate since oh. 8.30. Oh. I'm starving. That's what it is. Because I'm like, why am I dumb? I feel grounded. Um, uh, Springfield, Missouri, March 22nd and the 23rd, the Blue Room. Uh, I'll be headlining. And then as always, you can do, you could sign up for my Patreon, patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson, where I do group therapy over Zoom. You know, it's the new year, baby. You got to get to that gym. You got to get on those dating apps. You got to get into therapy and you got to maybe participate in group therapy. I'm not a licensed therapist, but I know a thing or two. Okay. These are really cool spaces. And uh, I have a solo podcast called The Voices in Our Heads that comes out every single Monday. So wherever you listen to your podcast. So woohoo, baby. And then Washington, D.C., you know about this one, but I'm headlining D.C. Comedy Law February 29th through March second that ticket link is already up and available also spoke to my agent i will have a handful of uh cities that i'm coming to some that i haven't come to in quite some time uh in 2024 and i'll get you those dates asap it'll be a fun time um and of course if you want to listen to my solo podcast without a country we do a nine non-biased you know look at the most important news stories of the week i've it, you know i always enjoyed doing that show but i really 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 especially I felt like got into a really good groove and I actually love doing it uh, by myself. I know it might be, you know, seem difficult to do an unbiased news show by yourself, but I think I'm pretty good at looking at things in an unbiased way um, as far as like politics is concerned. So I've trained myself how to do that, how to look at a lot of news sources. And that's kind of like the gift that I want to give to you to be able to look at multiple news sources, multiple stories about the same uh, political event so that you, you know, it's a a lot of it is training and empathy, which is going Mm. to be helpful for you in every single walk of life and piece of your life and in relationships. Like really everything is 
uh, incredibly intertwined. Um, so and it'll be especially fun. Mike Harrington and I have some good ideas uh, for the 2024 presidential election. So it's always fun to cover a presidential election on air. And I look forward to doing that with you. You can listen on YouTube to Without a Country podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts. Yay. All right. We've been, we've been on the edge of our seats to hear yeah. about your ayahuasca <laughs> retreat. <laughs> <laughs> What's that for? My I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I'm excited. Uh, you know what? What? You know fucking what? What? So, Kryn. Uh-oh. Remember that time where Justin Silver, Silver called you and was like, hey, I'm at Christina's apartment. She I did, do. She did mushrooms with a guy that she met in the ER and she's crying and wants oh, to kill herself. Oh, no, I do. So. I vividly remember. Yeah, oh, me too. <laughs> uh, and then you and Wendy came over and we ordered pizza and I was like, hey, Die. The best thing about that, though, about that though, was like you were so hungry that day I for some starving. reason, and you're never hungry, so you kept ordering takeout for us. And I was like, "Well, this is the silver lining of this situation." Yay, free food, <laughs> uh, so much. Uh, yeah, you left that suicide call stuffed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which you know what? Can't kill yourself if you're full, um, or at least it's harder. Maybe I don't know. Maybe the pills won't be as potent. Who knows? But um, but uh, so I kind of expected, and then I had a year following that, that was just like, I woke up weeping, which is not, oh God. I Great really, for a folk album, but. <laughs> wait, I woke up I weeping. Wake up weeping. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I I wanted to come into this. I, I did ayahuasca. I attended a ceremony. I did it twice uh, over the weekend with a shaman, a female shaman, which should always, it should almost always be a female. That's if you're going to do it. That was the first question I asked. Like, oh, this is not, I go, Christina, please tell me this is not some fucking dude. No, no, <laughs> my God, no. Um, and also it's not really, it's kind of looked down upon to do it in the United States because this is not where the indigenous place where this medicine kind mm. of was from. So the, the medicine of ayahuasca is treated with great respect. And mm -hmm. one thing that this this weekend taught me is that respect for plants, like for respect for plant medicine, including tobacco mm -hmm. and including marijuana, because my God, the rituals around how we did this were really lovely, mm. uh, really lovely. But so I bring up that previous mushroom trip to say that based off of everything I've heard about ayahuasca and seen the Chelsea Handler docuseries, I thought it was going to be some fucking, a lot of emoting uh, but I gotta say, I was the chillest one there. Mm. I was fucking chill as hell. Oh. And it was so nice to be the calm one. Right. Oh, there was a lot of screaming from other people and crying yeah. and stuff? Yeah, 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 okay. there was. Okay. Um, and then there was other people that were chill. Everybody's experience with ayahuasca is different and apparently it hits you differently every time. Um, and usually with drugs, I dive deep. I do too many of the drugs. I do all the drugs. I do, like I do. I I don't like. I, I really wanted to curb my relationship with substances, and which was one of the reasons why I wanted to do the ayahuasca. And when we got there, there was one drug. Uh, sorry, medicine. Uh, excuse me. Um, in in an email, in the welcome email that was that was uh, kind of pitched to us called right. Combo. It's right. K A M B O. This this substance, this medicine is amazing. I didn't take it because I go. We're just gonna do the ayahuasca. Okay, uh -huh. Christina, I just give me, I want one. I don't wanna do all these things. I don't wanna put all these things in my body. I just want one thing. Um, and you, there was an option to take a second cup of the ayahuasca about a couple hours into the ceremony each night. And I and I didn't. Uh -huh. Cause I was like, I just wanna do one. And You're not, also not little, overdo it. so. Yeah. yeah, and we didn't eat. Like yeah. we couldn't eat. I'm like, yeah. this sucks. And one thing about eating, like I get hangry, but like my brain just goes, as obviously I've just fucked, I've been staring at words and reading the wrong words uh, for the last two hours. Uh, cause I'm starving, but, um, my experience was really, really gentle. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, it, I've been told that you don't, we all have buckets, um, for throwing up. Oh, I thought this was, like a, you meant an emotional bucket. No, no. Well, <laughs> you have a literal bucket. Okay. Yeah, so the purging is a big part of it, but right. they, she said you could purge, you could take a shit, you could fart, you could yawn, in you could bucket? cry. You could shit in the bucket? No, no, no. If you, you shit in the toilet. Oh. But the She's buckets, saying like that you, the purge could happen purge in any happens. of these ways. I yes. see. Okay. And the most common is throwing up. Be so that's why anything. everybody had the bucket. I threw up twice, um, both times. Um, and- the first night I was like, I'm really excited. I, I met the people there. There were lovely people. Yeah. My God, they were fucking just so sweet and so lovely and lovely. Um, and so I was starving because I couldn't eat. I ate breakfast and then as little food as I eat, if I don't eat, if I don't like graze and I eat like a bird, but I just eat a little bit all the time. If I don't do that, I'm like, Neh. so uh, I was a little hangry, but um, <laughs> 
The ayahuasca, number one, I was I was warned that it tasted terrible. I fucking loved the taste. It tasted like mole. Maybe it was because I was hungry. But um, we drank it. We each got it at the same time. We went around, talked about our intentions. And my intention for this for the ceremony, uh, I got from Anne Marie, who you've heard on Guys We Fucked uh, previously. Uh, she has sat with ayahuasca many times. And so she posed this idea for an intention. And I was like, that really makes sense. I don't know if I talked about it last time we recorded, but uh, how can I serve the medicine? Okay. And I was like, I fucking love that because it's not about me. Uh I don't want it to be about me. I just, if there's some like breakthrough I have to, or a memory I have to look at or something I have to chisel through, great. If that's something that's the best, then I'll do it. But if not, like, how can I be of help? So that was my intention. Well, when you say, how can I serve the medicine? Do you, like, is the medicine representative of like, humanity or So like- the medicine has a, like a spirit to it. It's a mother, oh. it's a motherly spirit. Okay. And apparently when a lot of people that have, have said that they will see visuals, like you hallucinate. Right. I did not hallucinate at all. Okay. Um, but they saw mother ayahuasca as like an insect type of thing, like okay. some type of like, you know, freaky, well, not freaky in a bad way, but just like a, like psychedelic insect or something. Okay. And uh, I didn't see, I didn't visualize, I didn't see anything, but um, we were all on our yoga mats in the room and there was candles lit. There was only like one candle lit. So it was super dark, which so was really nice. So you were vomiting inside. That's mm-hmm. what I was yeah, worried. Yeah, in the bucket. Cause it yeah. was like, it, cause we were, we were thinking like Ithaca, it's cold. Okay. Cold as hell. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no, was I allowed to say where it was? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. it doesn't matter. Um, and so, yeah, so we each had like her, so the, the woman who was a shaman had her daughter, her daughter, she lives with her partner and her, her daughter, uh, who was so cute. Oh my gosh, she was so cute. But it was her little Halloween buckets that we were all vomiting. Her oh, old, her no. old Halloween Oh, I was like, oh, she's not using those again. No, 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 no. she's fine. Uh, but she like o- over the years, collected over the years. So, um, so we all had it and about, I don't know. I couldn't keep track of time. I really enjoyed not having my phone on me. That was yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. I didn't know what time it was. Yes. Loved that. All the food, like a lot of us bring, uh, brought food. Um, it had to be organic, uh, no meat, um, not necessarily vegan, but it had to be organic. And so I really also, it made me appreciate what I put in my body. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of food, you're like, oh damn, I mindlessly shove shit in my mouth that sh- that is just full of sugar. Like mm-hmm. it's just so detrimental to your to your emotional well being and your physical well being. So I really appreciated that part. So when we did the ayahuasca, um, you just kind of you drink it and then you just wait. And she said, don't purge before ten minutes. Like really try to keep it down so it can do its thing. And I was told that oh. it kind of like scans your body. You know, this is all m- metaphorically, but presumably it like scans your body. Uh-huh. And then if you have emotional blockages, whatever is supposed to happen, whatever experience you're supposed to have, you have. And so mine was just chill as hell. I was having fun. And the Did shaman- Did you feel high? Not really. I could, it was hard to tell because it was so dark in the room and oh. I was so hungry oh. that the, the hunger was really bugging me. <laughs> so it was hard to tell. I couldn't tell, but I think I, I was, I was, I just couldn't, it was just gentle. Okay. It wasn't intense. Okay. But then, so we all did one cup. Some people did two. Uh-huh. Oh, but before that, uh-huh. Jesus Christ. One of the reasons why I had a kind of profound respect uh, and education for plant medicine this weekend was because I, I forget what the name of this eye drop is called, but these are eye drops that indigenous hunters used to use. Uh-huh. I don't know where they got the drop. I don't know how they, maybe they didn't put it in their eye, but it was it, it was some kind of natural plant medicine that you put in your eye. Uh-huh. And she goes, sometimes I, I administer this or I offer it to people after the ayahuasca, sometimes before. Today uh-huh. I'm going to offer it before. And I was like, what does it do? She's like, it grounds you. It grounds you and you're able to see more clearly. And you're all that. And I was like, okay. And then she goes, it's a little spicy. And I was like- It's always, it's always good to put something spicy in your eye. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then she starts going around to anybody who wants it. You didn't have to do it. But the the one of the guys, so there was uh, four, or sorry, eight participants like me going there to do the ayahuasca, to have an experience, to set the intentions. And then there were four sitters. Okay. Meaning, but they all did the ayahuasca. So oh. everybody did. I'm like, they ain't nobody in here that's not doing the ayahuasca. Oh, I would have felt the same way. That would have made me uncomfortable. Yeah, it did. Okay. But after experiencing the weekend, I'm like, okay, I guess that's just how it, it's like, it almost is like, well, maybe it's disrespectful to not do it or right. something. Like that's kind of what I gathered by the okay. end of the weekend. Okay. And so the spicy little eye drops, I, I forget what they're called. When I tell you- Oh no, Christina. First of all, I, I felt my eye was like bothering me a little bit on the drive up and I was like, ah, whatever. And I, I have eye problems. It's yeah. like the, yeah, I have it's very easier. Jewish eye problems, yeah. like Jewish stomach and Jewish eyes. Yeah. Um, and I get styes a lot and I felt like something kind of bubbling in my eye and I was like, oh, whatever. And it, it did, it, it seemed minor, but who knows? So I had the spicy eye drops. Oh dear. 
I was like, this isn't a good sign. If this is the first thing I'm doing and this is this is the first reaction I'm having to this whole fucking night, I don't know that I like this, but whatever. You got to surrender and just fucking forget about it. I screamed, motherfucker, oh God, help me, motherfucker. <laughs> and not only that, I was lying down on my back on the yoga mat. I somehow managed to fully flip over onto my stomach. I don't know how. Uh-huh. I don't know how I did it. And I started crying. It hurt. The pain is going to be felt in future lifetimes for me. I mean, that, it, I, I, it, it was awful. It was awful. I'll never fucking do it again. I got angry that it hurt that bad. It would make me lose trust for the person running the thing it did. too. Yeah, I gotta be honest, it did. Yeah. But then it, it was regained because I did, I did get a sty in my eye. So my eye like had this huge, like it looked like a welt in it. Uh, yeah, I was like, your eyes look great night. Now, now. Yeah, but you could kind of tell if you see here, <laughs> this is where it was. A little bit. Just a little. Yeah. So it did heal. Okay. It did heal. Um, and, and perhaps with that, because usually a sty, if I don't get antibiotic eye drops in it, it lasts for five days. For sure. So I could, it's possible to credit this medicine with, with healing, with the healing of it and like the progression of like, let's just get the sty out of your eye. Cause it was brewing before the medicine. Okay. All right. But it hurts so bad. Okay. Oh, and then fuck what, it hurt. what was the shaman's reaction? Was that like a reaction that she had seen before? Uh, I didn't ask, uh, I'm assuming no. Uh, <laughs> well, I was like based on her reaction, yeah. Yeah, well she well, she had to go around and like give it to everybody else. So the sitters that were there were like kept giving me tissues. My nose, it was just, I was ex- expelling stuff and I was crying cause it fucking freaked me out. Like I have- Sure. Nobody likes their eye getting touched. But the one of the things that sold me on these eye drops were you, you how they are administered is you close your eyes. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop three drops on the corners of your eyes uh, and then you blink. And I was like, sold motherfucker. I'll right. do that. I don't I won't do the holding my eye open for an eye drop. Sorry. I'll do it when I'm administering the eye drop, but not when somebody else's. And so I did that and it was it wasn't good. So and what you're saying is you didn't see more clearly after that. No, not at all. <laughs> saw worse, saw way worse. Uh fucking sucked. It fucking was awful. Oh, and I was so like terrible. Traumatized. Honestly, it was like traumatizing. Yeah, but- I, I I I have a picture in my head of exactly how you're reacting to this. <laughs> And I go, wow. And you are correct. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So then that takes about 15 minutes for me to fucking calm down. And then we all get the ayahuasca. We say our intentions. We have a, she has, I'm sure, I I know that there are names for these objects that I'm about to describe. I just don't know what these names are, but she had a turtle shell on a stick with feathers coming out of it. You know, yeah. Okay. And, um, and we all went around, we shook it, we set our intention, you know, and then we took the ayahuasca Okay. and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Is it like a tea, tea form? It or? was like a little, uh, yeah. So it was brewing when we got into the house uh-huh. and um, you could smell it and it, it smelled kind of gnarly. But then when you got it in the cup, it just, it looked like syrup. Okay. Like with grains in it, like grainy syrup, like dirt. Okay. Um, and so it tasted fine and I was like sick. And then we waited and then I, we th- I threw up and I was like, okay, cool. Like how long after? Maybe like 20 minutes. Okay. I think the ceremony probably lasted like for five hours and we started at 8 p.m. So it was like, it was a late, late night. And you know, when I'm tired, I'm like, I don't want to fucking be here. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, but I was good. It was staying in and I, I felt good. I just felt, I, I was more so observing everybody. So I'm like, oh, this person's crying and probably getting something out. And this person is doing this and this person's dancing. And that's really cool. And so the next day we did an integration but, where we talked about sorry, what we experienced. What are you yeah. doing for five hours? Like, are you just sitting? Sitting there. Oh, and so another important part was uh, the shaman and a lot of the sitters are singers and, and musicians. So they played music. They had drums there. They had a guitar. Gorgeous singers. Okay, they're good at it. Thank yeah, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you oh imagine God, they sucked, being held be prisoner by ayahuasca and hell. then also by a bad, like a struggling folk artist? <laughs> Guys, buy my EP. It's coming out next year. <laughs> Dude, I'd fucking, I'd fucking bail. Oh, um, uh, yeah, so we, we, it was about five hours. Um, she asked if people wanted a second cup in the midway. I, I didn't want one because I was feeling it, and I was like, I was also felt a little nauseous. So I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to take more. Yeah. And then there was this thing called uh, hupa hook. It's not hookah. It's um, if you know what I'm talking about, you're probably screaming it into your, into your phone. But um, it's a, it's an ancient, it's a tobacco, and okay. it's something that it's. But she, she sprung this on us. Gotta be honest, she sprung this on us in the middle of the ceremony. And I'm like, nah, girl, I need an advance notice on these drugs or this medicine that and you're, you're gonna ar- give us. Cause you're already have something in your system. Yes. So yeah. I don't want to make that decision. Exactly. In- under the influence basically. Yeah. I know it's medicine, but still, I mean, yeah. And fortunately I was not like carried away by ayahuasca, but a lot of people were. And I'm like, how can they, f-? like I saw one of the per- per- Can you people- sign a contract on ayahuasca? I'm we guessing. did sign an NDA, not but, on it. But yeah, not on it. Not yeah. on it, not an NDA, but like a, I'm agreeing to do this on my own accord right, right, kind of right, thing. Right. Um, no, I don't think you could, you shouldn't be able to. But, um, and then so she, it was hoopa, I think it was or something like that. Okay. Hoopa, something. So it was this beautiful like 
pipe, long pipe, like that was C-shaped. Okay. And it was powder that she loaded into one end and she blew it into your nose, one of your nostrils as mm-hmm. you blew it through your mouth. Apparently that does all this stuff. Okay. Um, but I did not experience that. I don't like um, other people's I said breath no. in my body. That's true. That's yes. That yeah, feels yeah. so invasive. Yeah. Yeah, it does. But the, yeah. That yeah. feels like, you know, that thing where you suck up, you can suck boogers out of your infant's nose. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> oh, that's so disgusting. Aww. Maybe if it was my baby, I would. Yeah, I was like, I that wouldn't bother me. I would do it to Alfred. <laughs> if Alfred needed a little boogie. <laughs> um, so we had an integration Horrifying. section, the, uh, uh, integration session the next day, just talked about what we learned. And then uh, in the middle of the day, so the the woman who was the shaman, she was younger than me. I don't know how old, but I'm, I'm a guess she was younger than me. That's She felt younger than me. Um, her partner, as I was pulling into the driveway at the start of the weekend, he was like, limping to his car. Apparently he, he look the way he looked and what he's describing. I'm like, Oh shit. He has kidney stones. He's going, he was on his way to the ER oh, mother. And he's okay. like, there's a shooting pain in my lower. He looked like shit. Like I don't, I didn't know. I've never met him before, but he looked like he was in a lot of pain. And I was like, Oh my God, it's terrible. I've been like, shake a little ayahuasca on yeah. it. Works so good, buddy. <laughs> <Right>. Well, <laughs> he went to the ER. They took all these scans and stuff. They took all these tests. It was, they didn't know what it was. And they sent him home Fun. and they're like, uh, sorry. And he's like, what the fuck? I'm in so much pain. Yeah. That's a, I, I've done that a lot, many times. <laughs> so the combo, the cambo, uh, I, I'm pronouncing it wrong. I don't know. How, it's K-A-M-B-O though is how it's spelled. That I know. Um, is frog poison. So frog poison <laughs> is, yeah. And what you do is, you're gonna love this part. You make two burns in the person's skin Stop. and you wait for it to blister with and what, you put the frog person in the burn. You put the frog poison in the burn. What are, you, what are they burning you with? Uh, she used an incense stick. Oh, okay. So basically a cigarette. Okay. Yeah. Just whatever, whatever, whatever works. And so when he got home the next day, which was the the Saturday, um, he looked like he was in a lot of pain. Mm. And I asked him like, what, what I was like, do I want to do this Campbell thing? Apparently it's supposed to detox you of all the toxins in your body, all the heavy metals. And I was like, that seems very interesting. Right. But then I was informed how it's administered and what it was. I'm like, okay, what if I have like a reaction that's not good? I don't know. Yeah. I just, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I didn't feel safe. So I said- A lot no. of variables here. Yeah. And um, so, but I, I asked, is it possible to like witness him get it? And she said, yeah, for sure. They, they, they said, that's our kink. We have been <laughs> waiting for a woman to come and ask that. I took my vibrator, my Hitachi magic wand, which I was instructed to bring. Well, I was, thought that was weird, but- <laughs> Lo, lo and behold, there was a purpose. Um, so I watched him, I watched her burn him, his arms, and then uh, two burn marks in his arms and then put uh, the cambo in his, the wound. Why the two? I don't know. She said sometimes people do 10, so, like oh, it's all very- just like- m- She was trained multiple in Multiple points of entry. Yeah. Okay. And she was trained, like she knew her shit. At first I was like, are you full of shit? Right. But honestly, I was like, ah, I mean, I kept it to myself, but I was like, I don't know, man. Some of this stuff doesn't rub me the right way. But as the weekend progressed, I'm like, nah, you know, you know your shit. So but I, I mean, that's good. That's how you should kind of be going into any situation. For sure. It's yeah. new for me. Um, <laughs> usually I'm just blind trust. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. But um, I watched him and she said a lot of times the purging could be like violent in terms of like just the, the act of throw, you're going to throw up uh-huh. and it's going to, all the toxins are going to be like drawn in. Okay. Because what it does, because it's entering through a burn mark, it's going through all your lymph nodes. Okay. And collecting all the toxins. Okay. And so his face swelled up. He was barfing for like anywhere between five and 30 minutes. And his was about 20. And I watched him. I was like, this is really interesting. And then afterwards, he looked like a million fucking bucks. Oh. And he said the pain was gone. Wow. And I was like, well, God damn. Okay. That, I just saw that before my eyes. Like he was in pain and then he just wasn't. And, and we I was find like, out it's all trained actors. It's like the hair stuff from Sweeney Todd where all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so that was really cool. Okay. And then the second ceremony that night happened. And I, again, was, there was a lot of people like crying and, and you know, dealing with stuff. There was a lot of heavy stuff. Let's, you know, we did, no one who's just like perfectly fine goes to do ayahuasca. That is, <laughs> okay, so this, I have to tell you this, this is so funny because Chloe asked me, I was, Chloe LeBranch, like I was on, I was in Chicago this weekend and she was asking about you and she's like, how's Christina? I was like, oh, Christina's doing great. And I was like, she's actually going on an ayahuasca retreat this weekend. And then Chloe goes, no one who's doing great is going on an ayahuasca <laughs> retreat. And it just, the way she said, and it was just so fucking yes. funny. It was very funny. 
And she, there's definitely a lot of truth to that. Although I gotta say, I did, I, I am okay, so, which is nice. But I'm like, you know what? Two psychics told me I was molested as a kid sexually. Mm -hmm. And then I did a fucking regression and then I was like, I, there were memories, but I'm like, I still don't know. So I'm like, sure. maybe ayahuasca will make me deal with it. If it's something that even has to be dealt with, who fucking sure. knows? If I could live blissfully ignorant to it, God bless. You right, know? right, right, right. Um, and so, so yeah, I, I came so to the second night and I was like, Honestly, if I'm being real honest, I want to get psychic powers. I just do. I want them. I apparently already have them, but I want more of them. I no, want more. I want no. them revamped. Is that like- That's do, a, That is a, an effect that can happen. You get really psychic and you get really whatever-, it, whatever From like, ayahuasca? Yeah. So the spirit of the of the medicine like works with you and mm. can and can really- A lot of people have reported who didn't ask for this, reported like being super psychic and having like- wild lucid dreaming abilities and all this stuff. So I was like, well, <laughs> you had me at that. Okay. So I was like, if I'm going to pick an intention, whatever needs to happen happens. But if I'm going to pick, like give me psychic powers. And you, you, know eat, you, you eat between the ceremonies, right? Are you I allowed wait, to? So right after the ceremonies in the middle of the night, I just fucking stuffed my face. Yes. So and you you're allowed eat, to. Okay. You're yeah. allowed to. You okay. can eat whatever you want. And I went like a fucking a stoner at an old country buffet. I mean, Jesus Christ, I ate so much food. And then I got a stomach ache. But um, <laughs> so then the next day we couldn't, we, uh, two, we had to cap the eating at two. So okay. that by the time the ceremony came at eight o'clock, we were like, you know, not not full. And so, yeah, my I was like, I really would love to have powers. Um, but I'm also like here to serve you too. So if that's better, <laughs> just look in whatever you gotta do, girl, whatever you wanna do. Right, right, right. And it was another really gentle experience. I was laughing. And there's one point, so a lot of people were crying. And are um, you conversing with each other or kind of staying no. to your, you're staying, you're staying on your own mat. mat? And you can't touch each other. You can't talk to each other. You can't like oh, you are- You're not allowed we're to. We're experiencing, okay. it's an individual experience together. Interesting. Which okay. I, I really liked that. Um, and one of the sitters, the second night, like we all opened up about like our shit that was happening in our lives or like what our trauma is. And, Cause we all obviously had it. And uh, some of the stories I was like, God damn that you are a strong motherfucker. One of the sitters shared a story about his life that I was like, you are- a pretty fucking fantastic human being. And then that night at the ceremony during the ayahuasca, even though he was a sitter, you can't tell how this drug is, what of the drug is going to do to you, right? Of course. Because I was asking the sitters, I'm like, wait, you're all on ayahuasca. So like, what if you start yeah. bawling? Yeah. Do we come for you? Like, what's up? She yeah. goes, there's enough of us here that that's not going to happen. So I was like, okay. All and right. they were lovely. The sitters were just lovely people that I really uh, felt a nice connection with. But one of the sitters that second night had like a moment, but I saw him grieve for a, th a story that he had shared where he acted like the asshole and oh, he was really ashamed of that. And then I watched him, I, I heard him during the ceremony. I was like, whoa, this is really interesting. Like he is going through it. Uh -huh. And at the end we, we closed it with a fire ceremony where we talked about the thing we wanted to let go. Mm. And we threw these herbs into the fire. It was so beautiful. And he said, he goes, I feel like I, in a way, was able to somewhat karmically repay the person that I fucked over by what I just experienced. Cause cool. I felt all the shame and all the anger and it wasn't a beating myself up. It was like, no, no, you need to fucking feel this. And I was like, that's pretty much exactly my interpretation based off hearing and seeing you. Whoa. It was really cool. Uh huh. It was, it was really cool. And, and you um, didn't, and you didn't feel like, I know you don't often feel this as much as I do, but like, you know, like how when, when I go to, I concerts are like ruined for me because other people are going through shit like you. So with people going through things this heavy around you, you didn't feel like that, like, like energy got on you? Only because these people didn't suck. If these people sucked, I wouldn't have wanted to take in their grief or their, you know, like they were but kind. You felt, but you felt like you were taking it in, but it was okay. Or you feel like it, they, it they, they kept next, it to themselves. It was just, it was just in the room. It, I didn't take it mm. on in any way. I didn't feel bad for them. I was right. excited for them. Right. I was honestly like, this is gonna be so sick for you because that year totally. that I was cry like scream crying every day, mm -hmm. that's what was happening to them, mm -hmm. but in like a short period of time. And sure. I'm like, oh, I just raw dog the release without drugs, right. but they're using drugs to like help facilitate. There was this one, right. oh God, this this daughter and her father came and they were, the they had done the ceremony before and they were the sweetest, 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 sweetest people. And- um. And she shared, they shared that there was a narcissist, her mother was a narcissist and uh -huh. that's all, that's all I'll say. But like, I, I was so shocked because they were so nice. Uh -huh. I couldn't believe that uh, this man who was married, presumably, and this woman who was raised by this woman who well, was a narcissist. Well, you're nice. That's true. But they, <laughs> like, they were so nice that I'm like, it was like next level and it wasn't fake. It wasn't uh -huh. like, they were just genuinely like the sweetest 
they were so sweet that I just wanted to protect them. Do you uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It wasn't in a pathetic way. It wasn't an act. It wasn't a, what. I, it was just like, oh just my like God. Just like too good for this world. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly how I felt about them. Yeah. And they had a great sense of humor or whatever. But, uh, you know, and, the, and then the, the, her dad had a, t- a tough time in uh, one of the ceremonies, but it was, it was beautiful because I was like, the people that have a tough time, I was like, man, you're gonna feel They're so gonna good so after this. They're gonna get so much out of it, yeah. Feel so good after this. Right. Um, so the second ceremony, I definitely got like a higher feeling. Okay. But I was still like, just I was just fucking dancing. And then I had a scarf on me and I felt, I felt bad. I was smiling so big. <laughs> I was so happy. And I felt, I didn't feel bad about being happy as people were like, oh God, fuck, oh no, you know? Sure. I didn't feel bad. It didn't feel weird to be honest, but I felt, like I want to be respectful. So for some reason in that moment, I just covered my eyes with my scarf and I was just dancing, sitting down with a fucking giant smile. And I heard one of the sitters at one point go, yo, look at Christina. I'm like, <laughs> hell yeah, girl. And I was just having the best time, the best time. And then That's when the so fire funny. ceremony happened, um, we talked about what we wanted to let go. And I wrote about, she's like, you know, the, the shaman was like, I really encourage you. This is not public speaking. This is vulnerability. So I really encourage you to be as vulnerable as you feel comfortable with what you want to say you want to let go. Like, mm. don't just say like, I want to let go of this and then throw it in. Like, really try to like, mm. and um, and so th- it was beautiful. That's where that guy who was the sitter had talked about, like he felt like he actually paid karma through this ayahuasca s- setting because right. he, the, the person that he had really fucked over that he felt so much shame about, he like felt, her emotions. And I was like, that's beautiful. That's mm. beautiful. And then I talked about, um, I wanted to let go of my rage. Mm-hmm. And I talked about like, uh, you know, a parent using suicide as a, man- a manipulation tactic and not knowing and feeling so bad for them. And like, heart broken over their sadness only to realize that they were manipulating you. It's just like such a mind fuck. Obviously a person that does that has a deep sadness. It's just not what I thought it was. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and, and I really, I, I haven't talked about this in a minute because I used to talk about it all fucking goddamn day to anybody who would listen, including strangers, but just like <laughs> my mom did this and then she did this and then she did this. And including it's like, I, I made it my identity and it's not, it wasn't cute, but uh, that was part of my healing process. And, um, but I kind of was like, one of the things I wrote that I wrote, I was like, should I read this out loud? Or people I'm like, they don't want to fucking hear this shit. But I'm like, nah, I listen to everybody oh, else. They go. love it. <laughs> yeah, right. They fucking love but I'm it. I'm like, every time I had a moment in my life that was a coming of age moment that signified my growth, uh-huh. she, she robbed me. Ah. losing my virginity. Yeah. She yeah. robbed me of how that, it wasn't like the person I was seeing wasn't, it, that wasn't a good time, but that like she completely tainted all of these seem, like experiences that could be beautiful for sure. me. And I know that came from a place of pain. So that's, I don't, I don't blame her at all for that, but like also fuck you. It's you know hard what I mean? to forgive people um, for stealing your joy. Yes. Uh, yeah. Totally. And then when they don't acknowledge it, mm. and when you tell them you stole my joy in these moments, and they're yeah. like, "Well, I'm sorry," yeah, like what? Yeah, you know. So I think that's where a lot of my rage stems from is that, and then having a father with a massive temper, mm-hmm. um, massive temper. Uh, uh, between that, and then having a mother who like try to either take her own life or uh, completely literally leave me in a Walmart Mm. or leave me in a restaurant when I'm too young to drive and I can't fucking get around anywhere. It's like, dude, you wanted to be, you wanted, the parent you wanted to be was so not the parent that you were. And Mm -hmm. partly it was because you couldn't even fucking come to terms with what you did. Um, Because that could, honestly, and I still think this could heal everything, Ma, if you're listening, um, is just actually apologizing and like recognizing sure. that uh, I fucked up, which I have heard from her, but still in like, there's still defensiveness and there should be no defensiveness in an apology. I, and, and as somebody who gets defensive, cause I never want to hurt anybody. So when I do, I just feel so ashamed. You just got to fucking get over it. Well, yeah, that's, I was gonna say, that's the problem with an apology. Cause you have to then like, Admit you to yourself to how it. much you hurt somebody. Yes. And, and that's, that's really difficult for some people. Yes. And that yeah. that male sitter who was going through that thing, um, he 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 had he, yeah, he he was saying that he he had attributed his uh tough feelings he was experiencing to this one person that was hurting him when really he was using that person as a distraction because the person before this he hurt and he didn't want to look at that. So he was just preoccupied with him being abused in a, like a relationship. Mm. I'm like, that's very interesting. And also wow. like, what a man. Oh, I loved this guy. This guy fucking ruled. He was just a beautiful soul. Um, as we're 
everybody there. They're really lovely. And so, yeah, so I talked about the rage and I wanted to throw that away and that felt great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah. And then the next day I was ready to get the fuck out of there. Um, yeah. and, I, and I had to leave early. So I left earlier than everybody else, but I was like, I'm kind of glad that that happened the way that it is. Well, it was like more happening. They, another integration session. Oh, oh. And I went first and I had to leave before, before it ended, which I loved hearing everybody's stories. I just like, and it was really cool to watch a lot of the women in the room were mothers um, and to watch them talk about their children and to watch this one girl's dad. They were there together. He was the sweetest dad. Oh, fucking fuck. This man was so sweet. And it was very healing to watch a dad be sweet to his daughter. Mm. And it was also very healing to watch these women talk about their children in this beautiful way. I don't, of course, I don't know the extent of their relationships, but like, sure. I don't know what they share with me, but it was really lovely. Mm -hmm. and it was just great. And then I, I think that um, one of the very tiny things that I took away that I'd shared in one of the integration sessions, I thought was interesting, but it was so little, but I'm like, I have a feeling that the benefits of doing the ayahuasca are going to emerge over time. Not, it's not going to be an immediate thing, which is great. Cause that's, yeah. I love immediate gratification. And this is not that, which is fantastic for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but the second night when I threw up, I, I didn't dawn on me until I was throwing up the second time. But every, I, when I was a kid, I would always puke, always. Like I, I would go to the ER a lot as a child. Me I was too. just violently vomiting yeah, and I would I always love, have to stick uh, IVs in me. Really? That was a big thing for me too. I was a big really? vomiter. I vomited in I clothing vomited stores, restaurants, yeah, my too. grandparents' anniversary party. What was, did you ever figure out what was wrong? Uh, I just always, no, nothing. I don't think anything was wrong. I think I was just my- Kids I, get sick. I was just my body's way. And to, to this day, my body's way of expelling things that needn't be inside it is vomiting. So yes. Simple as that. I realize when I look back at my childhood I'm, with all the vomiting, I'm like, that's what that was. That yeah, was just detoxing all looked the at it. Yeah. emotions. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I loved it. Cause I, I th it's almost like, I always thought of it. Well, I mean, when I was little, I didn't think about it this way, but now as an adult, I always think about it as it's like my body's way of advocating for itself. Yes. Like when, uh, totally. like just the same way as like me, the person Corinne knows when to get people away. Even I have, it's almost like I have tr my, even my actual physical body knows how to do that. And I'm always mm. like, go you body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vomiting. Vomiting is a really important part of like the purging process um, with, with toxins. Like when you drink too much and you vomit, that's your body going, you just poisoned me and I'm gonna say no. Things I don't want no, no, in no. me immediately vomit. Yeah. Like it comes up so fast for me. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, when I vomited during that second ceremony, I re realized that every time my whole life up until that point, every single time I've ever thrown up, which is a lot of times, <laughs> it's a lot of times. When I went to Penn State, I would just drink on an empty stomach oh, and just yeah. hug and hug the toy. Yeah. I was always so miserable. I was always so like, ugh, just so hyperbolically miserable. Right, right, Like right. it didn't call for that type of misery. Right. Food poisoning kind of does, but like a lot of the vomiting I did, like when I was a kid, I don't think that was food poisoning, who knows? But like, uh, you know, I just was always miserable. I was always like, ugh, very Steven about it. Right, right, right. <laughs> no offense, Steven. But, um, uh, and I was like, I was in such a great mood during that ceremony, which struck me additionally too, because I was so fucking hungry that I'm, it's hard for me to be in a good mood when I'm hungry, yeah. but I was so giddy and I was like, oh shit, we're going to purge and this is going to be beautiful and it's going to be amazing. And my inner voice was so nice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, as I was throwing up, I was like, yeah, girl, you got this. Like fucking throw up. Yes. And I was like, I've never been in a good mood while vomiting in uh, my life yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. yeah. And I was in such a good mood as I was throwing up. And then I was like, Oh my God, I'm in a good mood while I'm puking. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So I think the value in this uh, ayahuasca thing, at least the the more immediate value that I can I can uh, gather is the is that it was a very gentle experience. And I think that because my own mother was uh, traumatized to the point where the, she raised me that, and it really traumatized me, I think that maybe the mother spirit in ayahuasca was like, we're just gonna be nice to you. Mm. We're gonna hold you and you need a mother energy that is kind and caring mm -hmm. and not too invasive and gentle and just lets you be yourself. Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, fucking A. Um, and I think that um, I've noticed things, I don't know if it's like a, like this could all be like a placebo effect. However, I've kind of noticed my thought process in the last two days. I mean, so we're, I, you're listening to this a lot later. We're recording this kind of right after it happened. 
But uh, my thought process, I'm actually finally thinking of long-term consequences, which was a real bad thing that I was fucking me up for a long time. That's where addiction stem. Sorry, what, what do you mean? What, so what do you mean? Like, so like not like the things that I do immediately, if they feel good, but they fuck me up in the long run. So like okay. eating really sugary foods, uh, okay. not having a, like a, a good diet, a healthy diet and a rec, uh, exercise regimen. Uh-huh. Like sometimes I'm on with it, sometimes I'm off, but like drugs, just uh-huh. like fucking doing drugs, Adderall, smoking, all this stuff. Like, oh, okay. Uh, and also like how I treat people, just everything. It's like, it all has, it all adds up to these long-term consequences oh, of like, yeah. am I the person that I want to be? Yes, yes, yes. And so I feel like, and I know that a lot of times um, the body keeps the score, uh, Bessel van der Kolk, who wrote that book, uh, certainly talked about this. Uh, when you experience a lot of trauma as a child, your long-term, the long-term part of your brain that does the long-term thinking of like, will this be good for me later on? Right. Is fucking shot. Right. You can, of course, regain it back through a lot of uh, work and therapy, but that's one of the things that goes when you're traumatized. Mm. So that's why you can make decisions like you're a fucking teenager and Mm -hmm. you're like, I'm never gonna die because you don't, the part in your brain that is like, hey, let's intervene here and actually do a little checking to see if this is what you wanna be doing is virtually dead. Mm. Um, And that's one of the things that you recover during therapy. So um, yeah, so I feel like I could be making this up, but it kind of, it does kind of feel like I have more thoughtfulness in that realm. Um, It was really cool. I do recommend it, um, not for everybody, but I, I, mean, I, I had a great experience. It was very gentle. Yeah. I was so excited to not be wiling out. And I, at the same time, I wasn't like relieved not to be like, oh, thank God I'm not the one fucking crying and screaming. It wasn't like that at all. It's like, this is nice to be calm. Mm. This is just nice. So there you go. Yeah, I, I definitely, I'm, I'll, I'll do it one time in my life. I mean, I'm just, cause for me, it's like the hesitation is I'm never scared for what's gonna come out of me. I'm always petrified for what's gonna come out of other people. And oh, like really? choosing to be like, because I don't like, it's, I, I, cause I don't know what they're gonna do. And totally. like, I, so I just have like this distrust of like how they're gonna react and then how that's gonna somehow affect oh, me. Yeah, so like I'm not do- scared of anything that's hidden in me. Right. I'm scared of everything that's both oh. hidden and not hidden in others. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. <clears throat> and so, also just like finding someone that I feel comfortable being vulnerable. And it's not like, it's not about like um, that I need someone to feel comfortable about being emotionally vulnerable about because I actually find it very, it's easy to be vulnerable emotionally around other people. It's literally what we do for a living. Yeah. I find it easier to be emotionally vulnerable around people I don't know than people I do know in fact. I, yes, I agree. <laughs> so the stranger aspect is great, but I'm like, uh, for me, it's more like the, uh, to feel like physically safe. Like if something went wrong, like yes. if this affects me wrong, like can I trust these people around yes. me to like fucking call 911 and like yeah, yeah, yeah. get me to safety? Yeah. That kind of a thing. Absolutely. I, I don't, I didn't look this up, but like, I don't know if anybody's ever died doing it. I've, I have no idea. Like, I don't like, is there a situation that you would ever need to call 911? I have, I don't know. I mean, these kind has, of drugs there has to be. I mean, like I didn't do research for ayahuasca, but I did in, is, research for this for DMT about uh, dying. And it's like the, those, kind of psychedelic drugs have a extremely low. low rate. Like, especially the drug killing you, what you have to worry about is that you will react in a way that you will put yourself in physical harm. Like jump oh, off a roof or I go, see. you know, go try yeah, to go this swimming is not, in something. You can't move. Like right. it's like yeah. what, a couple of the people that were having like a rougher time, like they needed help going to the bathroom. Like they need to be walked to the bathroom. So yeah, yeah. you're not, you ain't gonna do nothing that's gonna harm anybody. Right. And it is very individual. Like you don't, even right. though you're sitting very close on a yoga mat to somebody else, it's still very individual. Were you and cold or hot or regular? I had a bunch of blankets. I went through all the temperature changes. Okay. Uh, when they put those spicy ass eye drops in my eye, I took my shirt off and I was in my sports bra and I was like, fuck, it hurt so bad yeah. that I started profusely sweat. It was awful. Yeah, that doesn't sound great. Fucking awful. But um, but yeah, it was, uh, I, I, I was very trusting. I, I came in uh, cautious in a, in a healthy way, I think. And then I got to know the people. Um, so that was nice. Mm-hmm. And they, and they just happened to not suck. Mm-hmm. I cannot imagine that every group is like that. I, ain't no fucking way every group is like that. Statistically impossible. Yeah. yeah. And there was, uh, there was a couple men there and they were really lovely. The, the dad of course was, and he was emotional and I just, I just loved him so much. Oh my God. I love that man. And his daughter was so lovely. Um, but then there were two other men there that was just great. They were very, they didn't really talk much, very calming. Mm. Very like, I'm like, okay, I liked, I liked the energy. If there was someone there whose energy I didn't like, mm. I don't want to fucking hear you cry. I, I, uh, I don't know why. 
I just don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to yeah, hear yeah, your problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear you. At, like, but yeah. I will say that the that the emoting that happens is like a healing thing. So mm. I don't like. I don't know if anybody's ever got done ayahuasca and then been like gone on a, like a cursing rampage or something or just started screaming like mean things or whatever. I'm sure it's happened, but like it's it's more people dealing with the pain inside of them. So mm-hmm. and it wasn't. I feel like if you don't like someone though, like that they probably need to heal the pain inside of them for sure, most. for sure, a hundred percent. And I like I I and I, I you know that was my that's my immediate instinct of like I don't think I would like I just because I was so comfortable with everybody emoting and I didn't take it on in any way. Mm. It's because I like their goodness was so clear to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and if their goodness wasn't clear to me, or maybe I thought they were like had a motive or whatever the fuck. What are the fuck dumb shit my ego was making up? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I would react to it. Seems but, like um, there has to be like some piece of at least good intention that you have if you're going on a retreat like this, like, that you're interested in I getting agree. in healing or getting better. I agree. <clears throat> the only I, the only type of person I can imagine actually going to one of these retreats and fucking ruining it is like an influencer. Yeah, 100%. That's the only fucking cunt yep. that would ruin it for everybody is right. a fucking influencer. Right, right, right. Um, Cause you, and I, yeah, again, the not having the phone. Yeah. Fucking Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love that part. Um, and yeah, and it were you it, actually not on your phone for like seventy two hours? Or no, we we got them back um, during the day uh, Saturday, um, but the, she put them in a box. Our phone and our car keys. Oh, interesting. Because um, sometimes people your car keys. Yeah, because like I know. And again, Uh-oh. I was like, why? Why? That's do, how why a you my car movie keys? Fucking begins. hundred uh, percent. I was thinking that, but um, but it's really like she's like sometimes people are like so excited about like their revelations that they mm-hmm. just want to fucking like leave. Oh, oh. And I'm like, oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. So I, and I- after- And then she said, and actually we do a key party afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Who was cocaine? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was really cool. Mm. It was really cool. I, I it was cool. It mm. was so subtle. It was so nice to have a subtle drug experience. Yeah, I was, I was, I was definitely expecting a wilder story. Me too. So- <laughs> I got what I needed, you know? That's what you get, you know? Yeah, you get what you, you, get get what what you need, need what you want. not what you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's so, like really the model for life. Yeah. The slogan for life. Thoughts, Michael? Mike, uh, definitely your- not. Michael, 100% never doing ayahuasca in his life. No. 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 Why oh, would I? On. Yeah, I know. I could tell Michael would never do that. <sighs> Close-minded. <laughs> no, well, not everybody has to, to do, I, do it. I have no interest. I mean, I have. Okay. You got some fears though. Hey, yeah, of course you. I do. Yeah. Ooh, you wanna, yeah. You maybe you could on? ask the mother spirit to make Mike fly. Aw. <laughs> fly like a Michael <laughs> to the sea. I ha- No, you're never going to catch me doing ayahuasca. No, we didn't think you. Uh, I mean, yeah, I certainly didn't catch you outside so. not doing ayahuasca. Yeah, I'll be I'll be not doing ayahuasca. Yeah. <laughs> be watching a baseball game. <laughs> oh, you guys do ayahuasca. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Good fucking dropping shit. Ruining the ceremony, <laughs> dropping shit and coughing <laughs> and sneezing. Um, and another thing that this, this evening was like, you know, subs- substances has been u- have been used since the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. Like the second man found like tobacco and all- Well, didn't all we drink things. something in Tulum and then we just didn't want to be rude, but we didn't really know what the guy was giving us? Remember in the forest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I wore that sec- bathing suit, that was way too sexy for the occasion. Yeah. We're, we're like, oh, oh right. better be drugged than to be <laughs> disrespectful to the forest, man. That's true. And we all drank out of the same cup, yeah. though. I remember I'm like, I guess I'm That was the part that ruined this? me the most. I, I, I didn't care about <laughs> the, the germs. substance. I was like, I just don't want to, can I get my own cup? That was yeah, my issue. Because we were on the brink of a pandemic. I, I, <laughs> pandemic or no pandemic, I don't like sharing fucking, again, yeah. that's, you know, that's why I, one of the so, things I hate most about weed, weed culture is the sharing of yeah. the joint. I find it disgusting. Technically it is disgusting if you allow yourself to think about it, which right. you, you should. Um, <laughs> I don't, but uh, 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 typically in ayahuasca ceremonies in Peru or in Brazil, whatever, you do share the same cup because it's like a communal thing. But, yeah. uh, but we had we had our own cups. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it also made me have an appreciation for substances and with weed, I've been smoking weed a lot less, but I was like, oh, n- whenever I smoke weed, I want to set an intention. Mm. And not just fucking smoke weed. I feel like, yeah. I'm like, goddamn, with all the respect that we paid to these plant medicines, it really makes me realize how obnoxiously uh, just lackadaisical we are about the right. substances in our lives, tobacco being one of them, cannabis being another one. And and alcohol, and, and alcohol is a grain. Alcohol comes from a fermented grain. So it's like, you know, these, well, because people are using these substances to run. Right. And we're know? just so, we're so abusing the yeah. beauty in these substances and actually yeah. completely missing out on the benefits and doing them too much. Um, 
America, right? Yeah. So it made me like reappreciate weed and like tobacco, like tobacco. I didn't realize tobacco was a very ancient, like spiritual mm-hmm. drug. Mm-hmm. And part of the the hookah, the humba, whatever the fuck. I, I'm so sorry. I'm, I, don't, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, it was mostly tobacco powder, a specific t- type of tobacco leaf powder. But the people that I saw do do the do it. They really like they purged a lot right after, but they also were like describing like these beautiful effects from it. And I'm like fucking tobacco, man. We just fucking smoke a cigarette and then throw it on the ground. It's so yeah. disrespectful. Yeah. So it made me be more respectful to the food I put in my body, but also the substances and how like they could be incredibly beautiful experiences if done with respect, research in the right setting mm-hmm. and intention, mm-hmm. intention. So I will never again smoke marijuana without setting an intention about it. Even if it's just, I just want to connect to my child self. Like that's it. Mm-hmm. So that's my ayahuasca experience. Nice. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds like, super pleasant. I liked it a lot. How are you? Good. I'm good. Um, yeah, I went to uh, the witch, witch store in Chicago, Malloway Brothers. And I was like, of course, I was like, hmm, I didn't, I found out the actual brothers owned it. And I go, Ugh, already, man. already don't love it. Chicago one Warlock of the, store. Well, I like one of the things about witch, uh, witchcraft is, well, usually both male and female witches are, are just witches. Warlock is more like derogatory. Oh, but oops. like, um, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. Like, I just love how feminine of a religion Wicca Mm. is. Like that's one of my favorite things about it, that it's super feminine, feminine led. Like a lot of love ayahuasca is very divine feminine is the whole fucking point of it. Even though there are, you know, many men who practice uh, Wicca or magic, whatever you're calling it. Yeah. And so, and of course I, so I asked the guy who worked there, like, first of all, are these actual brothers? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I've seen, I see some things in this store that I haven't seen. I was like, I've been to witchcraft stores all over uh, America and Canada and I've never seen so many animal parts. Cause that part, I was trying to be uh, open-minded because it was, um, I would almost describe it as like a, non-denominational, uh, non-mainstream religion store because there was mm. a lot of like, they, it was not just Wicca or paganism. It was um, like, v- there was elements Kabbalah? for vood- voodoo. Oh. No, Kabbalah is still ma- is voodoo mainstream. Is bad? Now. No, 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 no. Okay. Voodoo is an actual religion that many people practice, but they do use like animal parts in it. So I can't be proud. And it's also mm. like, it's, it's, uh, yeah. It's, I mean, in New Orleans, it, it actually is a really big religion, but like a lot of times they are like, you'll see like, you know, dead chickens and stuff. And that's, and so I'm, I'm just not going to partake in anything yeah. where we're making animal sacrifices, but sure it, it's part of it. Yeah. And so, you know, I was trying to be non-judgmental, but it's very hard for me when there's just like buckets of animal parts. And like, you know, that they didn't just take the boar's nose off when the boar was dead anyway. Like yeah. something, something, it wasn't roadkill first. Yeah. So you're just like, oh, there's a lot of animal parts in here, but I was like, okay. And then, I mean, you can, use animal parts in, you know, Wiccan spells. Of, I mean, I think it's all based on like how it makes you feel. So if you're, if it's something that makes you feel uncomfortable like me, I'm never going to incorporate an animal part into a spell or magic work. Um, Cause I just don't feel, and I feel like when you like know about the foundation of, I mean, I could see using an animal part if the animal was dead anyway, for mm. sure, because it's very into like using all the parts and like not wasting. But to me to kill an animal, yeah, I just don't see like to, I don't know. Anyway, um, but I was like, try not to be judgmental. I was like, there's other things in here besides what you do. And most people think what you do is crazy. So that's fine. Sure. Um, but then if I asked the guy about it and he was like, yeah, the brothers, they just wanted a place where you, they could do the most hardcore stuff. And I was like, of oh, course, God. even men had to step into witchcraft and make oh, it as titties hard, and as alligator hardcore heads. Hardcore as possible. Oh, I was Jesus. like, some things don't need to be hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> but it made me laugh. It was a really, it was a really, one of the best uh, stores I, I've been to, but I was wow. like, I could have done without that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. And it was fun. And we were with, we were with the, um, the guy, the comic who was hosting, uh, for the weekend or a shout out Eric Freddie. And I, I, you know, most times, you know, a man who's not into that kind of thing, uh, kills the vibe, but he was so <laughs> great. Yeah. Uh, Good. and he was so Good like sport. interested and curious and not just respectful, didn't try to rush us because it wasn't something that he was into. Like me and Chloe were in there, we're doing spells, we're doing, <laughs> making bottles, we're nice. taking, we, I mean, we took our time. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. and he was like, so nice the whole, uh, period, uh, time. So Aww. I was like, I was just like, this is just Eric, Freddie, no, no red flags, um, Yay. which is almost That's impossibility. A, I know. I, I never told heard him, you say that. I said, I've been scanning you all weekend. I said, I've been looking for problems that are coming from me quite honest. Yeah. Been going out of my way to find them. Yeah. 
found none. That's great. And I didn't. So that was lovely. But I mean, that that was kind of like the culmination, not the culmination, but it was, it, it was very on theme for all the things I've been working on this year, because like, you know me, I love to produce. I love to you know, uh, have achievements. I love a certificate or an award. Mm. And I really didn't do anything this, you know, from the, from an outsider's perspective, I probably made very little progress in my career or life this year, but internally, I feel like it was probably one of the most, um, uh, life-changing years of my life so far Yay. Uh, on the for inside. The better? Yeah. For Yay. the better. I mean, also, and I mean, listen, the year is not over yet, so I don't certainly don't want to jinx it. But like, you know, also uh, going off of what has was the worst year of my life so far, twenty twenty two. And listen, I'm sure there will be worse years, and I'm ready for them. Um, it was, uh, you know, it didn't twenty twenty three didn't have to do that much to deliver. <laughs> you know, the bar was low. The bar was extremely Just low. No relative deaths. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was great because I, 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 I set a lot of, you know, intentions that you're talking about to, you know, when I was trying to work on things, um, especially after my dad died, I wanted to work on things that weren't like achievement based in the human realm, you know, like Mm -hmm. not like, uh, you know, get this many views or do this special or get this job. Like those things seemed kind of meaningless to be honest, um, at that period. And, I certainly didn't want to focus on relationships since I had just exited one because I wasn't in a place to be going through that. So I had mm-hmm. to find other, you know, ways to find achievement. And I did find that in like reconnecting with like, you know, w- Wicca basically that I had, you know, always been interested in, but, ha- you know, since I was like a, had placed on a bit of a shelf since I was in middle school or high school. And then to re-pick up something that I had a love for and a genuine love for nice. as a child and reconnect with it and get really into it so in nice. a way that I, you know, as a adult that I can, you know, grasp some of these concepts at a much higher level, have a much stronger intuition, uh, you know, am an adult living on my own so it can set things up in my house. Like it's been, mm. gr- it's been extremely gratifying in a way that uh, I never expected. That's awesome. And also I know like a lot of people started, you know, reaching out to me about like, you know, tarot and witchcraft and advice. And I'm like, I will talk about it from time to time, but I gotta be honest, I'm not gonna respond to any of those. Cause it's like, I you really, journey, I baby. really needed one thing for me. Yeah. And so there will be no Wicca podcast. There's not gonna be a live stream of about Wicca. I'm not yeah. going to be giving my top 10 recommendations for hat witchcraft. Like, you know, the, you this do is need a, something for you. It's, it's a so really vital. personal, um, you know, thing. I, the more reason I talk about it more is just because it's been a big part of, um, my year. And also I guess to take the stigma off of witchcraft a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but other than that, like, yeah, I kind of like, you know, people ask me like, can you do a tarot card reading for me? No. Yeah, I can't no. do any of these things because uh, it's been, that's when I think the most important thing, it's like, there has to be something for me and something, mm-hmm. especially because one of my greatest joys, you know, writing and comedy, you know, became my career. So then I don't have a private hobby for me. Yeah. And so it's almost like my exploration into, you know, spirituality or spell casting or any of that kind of stuff. That's like my own thing for me. And I've also like, <clears throat> even a, uh, not gotten new friends, but like uh, taken front existing friendships to new levels because nice. I feel like there's like an understanding between witches. Hell uh, yeah. And it's been funny because I totally, I see people like making fun of me about it online and I go, that's fine. Yeah, that's <laughs> Enjoy fine. Enjoy your life, loser. My, that's been my whole life. You know, people yeah. attempting to make fun of me because I'm doing something weird and it's like, that's okay. Yeah. That's your thing, people not my like thing. Weird. Yeah. Which is dumb because weird's so fun. I don't mind it. It's unique, but it's yeah. okay, you just don't get it. Yeah, right. It's all good. You're just a loser, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't even think that. I'm just like, yeah, you no. don't get it. It's okay. Yeah, that's great. Michael, thoughts on this year? The thing, intentions we're setting for 2024? Yeah, what are your intentions? Uh, intentions for 2024, primarily to take a little bit better care of my, uh, I guess narrowly I'll say body, like my health. Yeah, mm-hmm. your um, physical self. Yeah, I said the 2020. Three was spent uh, a lot of time was spent in a in you know building a, the studio, so mm-hmm. I neglected some part. But it's not it, health is broader than just you know like I I wasn't gonna put like um like any kind of like weight loss get goal on it. I just like sure I had a lot of moments this year where I really felt unhealthy and mm-hmm. it went beyond like feeling kind of heavier. It, it was more like like all right, I'm thirty 
I'm 34 now. I can't just like, I can't do the things that I could do in my mid twenties. I have to, I can't just like coast on being like, I'm yeah. young. My, you can't just continuously will... go hard, not sleep, yeah, it's eat crazy. shit. Right. Yeah. Right. Can't go hard in the paint for that long. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like, it's like a real, uh, just adjustment to just be like a lifestyle change as opposed to being like, I'm going to lose 10 pounds at, at the, at the onset. It's just like, make sure I'm moving my body and like going to the gym and don't have days where I'm like just sitting at my desk for 11 hours or like whatever, you know? Um, so that's the big one. But overall, I, the other thing was that I think that I think 2023 was definitely a year of growth it was kind of a year where I definitely laid some groundwork, both personally and professionally, which is kind of a boring thing while it's happening, I think. Totally. It's not all that exciting. Yeah. You, you know? don't see an immediate reward from it. Yeah. So I'm hoping- I've been laying groundwork since 2018. <laughs> I know. I've, I've, I've felt that also. <laughs> But I don't know. I mean, like, I think romantically I, I had a very odd year and that's the only way I can describe it. <laughs> not necessarily good, not really necessarily bad, just kind of like odd. strange. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I uh, felt like I really moved past uh, like that relationship with Lex and- Who? I, well- Oh, I can't believe you said her name. Wow. Well, I'm not saying it to trash her. No, so no, I no. felt like it's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm proud of you. But like, I felt like I moved past that and then like- That's a, incredible. Got involved with somebody who who like f- broke my heart the uh, this year. It's Hey-o. just like, you just the fucking, the shit storm never ends. And mm. then, and but we we've, we've had all these conversations about- um, you know, the last month, I guess, or maybe a little bit longer, we've had a lot of conversations about like men breaking up with women mm. and kind of, and I think a lot of that, I feel comfortable saying it now, but like, like cryptically, some of that was me dealing with being with a person who I kind of wasn't a hundred percent sure about and had to, I had to do that. I was so in our situation. podcast bullied you into doing the right thing. It's not that it bullied me. <laughs> But it right made thing. me, uh, you know, when, when this happened, I felt very guilty about it. And I was texting you about it, Corinne, just yeah. kind of saying like, man, I, I, now this is really, this is the gist of it. This is why men don't do this. Yeah. Cause I, this, this is a person hard. that I broke up with that didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Like I almost wish she was like a drunk or something. Totally. But I love, you know? and I, and I love that you said that to me because we had a conversation about like, you don't have to do something wrong. The right. other person doesn't have to do something wrong. The house doesn't have to catch fire for you to leave with. it. Yeah. Right. So this was the thing. I, I think that this was a kind of, you know, this is something that happened towards like not too long ago. And I think that that has sort of springboarded me into thinking about 2024, like how to, I just want to be in like a, not that I don't think I'm like a nice, good person now, but I want to be, and I, I, truthfully, some of this has to do with, we, we meant, I think we mentioned it in another episode, but like we lost Kenny DeForest, who was a mm-hmm. comedian. Oh, yeah. And it does make you think somebody that, that like dies tragically that young, the one thing I can kind of say about him having not really known him very well is that mm-hmm. the community at large has, nobody yeah. has a bad thing to say about the guy. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it makes you think, Oh, how will I be remembered too? Exactly. Like, yeah. You, you, there's all this stuff now about this guy going, he was an organ donor and he saved five people with his organs. Like, it's just like, well, Kenny, Kenny this, did. Yeah. 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 yeah, fucking, yeah. So fucking it's Kenny, like, man. Fucking classic Kenny from fucking the great beyond. Kenny. Right. Yeah. So it fucking puts, helping people after you die. I love it, that. It puts you in the situation where like, like, it's weird that I'm putting a breakup in with, uh, you know, the loss of a, of a peer, but they're honest. They're 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 both losses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's just like, I feel like, you know, I feel like I handled that situation really well with this, this girl that I, this woman that I broke up with. And thank you for saying woman and correcting yourself. Mm -hmm. I always Mm -hmm. try. Mm -hmm. She Mm -hmm. handled Mm -hmm. it with so much class and the way that I figured she would, because she was, you know, Classy, so yeah. great. But that also means that your read on people is getting better, right? Because like how what, how someone reacts when you break up with them is really, I think like really shows their character, yeah, right? Really. Yeah, oh yeah. And then for me, like that was what's, like that was like definitely what was, when I was reflecting and or really um, depressed over the Frank breakup, uh, m- more than losing 
Frank, who wasn't, I knew the moment he broke up with me, we weren't compatible. I knew before he broke up with me that we weren't compatible long-term, but I was like, you really need to reflect on why you reacted in the way that you did. Yeah. Cause it was fucking crazy. Well, and this is the thing. So this was the first time that like, I, I got dumped by somebody that I really think that I fell in love with this year, even though we weren't together for very long. Um, and obviously I was in a relationship with this person who I broke it off with. And I feel like I can really hold my head up high the way that it's just a sad thing. It, it had to happen. Right. I didn't yeah. waste her time. Like I realized that it, it was like time to go and I was as direct as possible with her. Mm -hmm. I did it face to face. Mm -hmm. I looked her in the eye and told her the uncomfortable bad news. I love all this. And, Cause I have major yeah. respect for her and it was just, Isn't and I didn't, beautiful? we didn't leave. We didn't end that night thinking that the door might still be open. Like the door could be open for us to be friends. I don't think she wants that. The door was closed and you let her know. And then so it's like, it's like it hurt because it hurts in that moment yes. more, but long-term it, it, the wound will heal so much faster. Exactly. Yeah. Not, not like this fucking cowardly snake in the grass that, that uh, yeah. like just has run away from me basically kind of like leaves the door open we have a, I'm not going to like, I go love the, the cowardly <laughs> snake in the grass. Yes. Listen, speak as much, your fucking truth. Michael. As much as we heal on this podcast, this. we will still all we're be a little bitches. bit petty. And that is part of the brand. And we're not trying to fix it. We're not no, trying to fix it. Maybe, fun maybe, for us. maybe accept it. Cause we're you know, enjoying it. I was bitching to Christina about this, like right before we, we started uh, recording. And I was like, I was like, you know what? Like maybe this is like to, to basically tie this all together. Mm. I do think this is sort of like a step into real adulthood where Yay. in the past where I've kind Mike of like is a man. broken it off with women. You do feel like a man. Yeah, it's true. I would hope so at this point. Yeah, you've been through a lot. <laughs> you know, but in the past I would, I did, I'd broken it off. I I had broken it off with women and I've kind of like lied about why I didn't want to be with them when it was yeah. clearly just, I wasn't that into, I, 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 I've used like my own mental health as, which I, I I'm like ashamed of now. We've as all like done the, it. the reason that I can't be with somebody. I've done it. <laughs> but I I was lying. That's I the thing. Me too. You know? I actually me haven't too. done it. The one time I said I, it yeah, was, was my like, mental health, I say it we really all done was. It. Yeah, right. No, I said we all done it. And I'm like, nah, Corinne hasn't. But I've done <laughs> it a lot. I like no, fit. as a lie. No, no, no. I have a lie. Because I'm too fucking pussy to say the truth. Right. And it's like, that's disrespectful to me and right. to that person. Right. So I, I, I'm i like happy that even though that didn't go like, like have a lot of legs, uh, this was a really wonderful person that I feel like at least I, I did them the proper service and showed them the proper respect in a, and in a year where I don't feel like I have gotten that from a lot of other people. So yeah. I just want to keep, huh. you know, that's what I want to do. And it's, it's beyond just romantic relationships. Like mm. 2024, I really want to like, I want to focus on doing the right thing and being as good of a person as I, as I can be, because, you know, I, I just don't want, it like hurts. It hurt. I feel bad when I don't feel like I've done the right thing. And, and at least once the dust settled with the ending of that mm. relationship, now I feel like I did the right thing. Yeah. I, I felt, it felt weird for about a week because yeah. I was just like, like, it's weird that I'm not going to have this person in my life anymore. And she didn't do anything wrong. It just sure. like wasn't working yeah. for me. And like, now I just feel like, I think you've said it in the past, like given the gift of your time back, like yes. not wasting your time, not yes. letting this get Grins, out of hand. Through the membrane. It's I, true It's though. a beautiful gift. I've given a lot of my male friends um, that, that talk about just give this person their life back. Right. So give them it back. That's, that's my plan for 2024 is like be boring. healthy and, and live I give virtuously. I, integrity. I, I think, be in, I live in your integrity. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all living our truths. It feels really good to be in integrity, even if it's like uncomfortable. It's still at the end of the day, like still like, yeah, it's feeling uncomfortable, but I also deep down, not even that deep, know it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And yeah. you can't put a price tag on that, baby. Wow. Oh, Guys, nice. we've grown. What we do you have an intention for 2024? I don't know. You know what? Honestly, I don't uh, usually like... um I don't, well, I don't like to set like big new year's resolutions. Uh, but I also feel like, uh, especially the second half of this year, like I think like once summer was on, cause I, I was the year I, I woke up 
I mean, I was like just rock really, really bad last year. And I, and I remember waking up, I don't know, at 3 PM on new year's Eve, I was like, or whatever wildly late time I was mm. staying into. I was just like sleeping to like, cause 2022 felt like it lasted forever. Mm -hmm. Every day felt like a century to get through. So I just started sleeping a lot just to make the fucking time pass totally. because I was like, I fucking cannot do this anymore. Um, and I just woke up on new year's Eve and I was like, Corinne, this has to be over now. You this ha you have to have, you, you don't have a choice. No matter what happens, you have to have a good 2023. And I went and I had an appointment, you know, at a, a dry bar, or is that what it's called? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, hair, dry bar yeah. to get, well, not to get my hair braided. Cause mm. I was like, I'm blowouts, I can do my, my hair is so straight, but I'm like, I want Oh yeah, you had like the- I wanted the, French the, braids. Yeah. And I was like, we're just gonna do your hair. And I got a dress and like, I was, you know, at least I, I was at the, starting at the point where I felt like, you know, had had done a lot of work. I did did a lot of work on my physical health last year because I felt so terrible physically. And so like, I looked good, really good on New Year's Eve, but I still wasn't feeling super good. Whereas this mm. year I look at it and I feel good. Um, and I put on my dress and I was like, I'm going to have a great show and we're going to have a great party. And it was great. It was probably one of my favorite New Year's of all time. It was time. truly, truly great. And I think it really set off the year amazingly. And then we went to the AVNs, which was super yeah, fun. Yeah, that was fun. Um, and I went to Ireland, which I really enjoyed. Uh, like I enjoyed it so much more than I expected. Uh, and so there was a lot of good things, but there was still like, I, especially a lot of like, like I, I dated and fucked some of the <laughs> lowest, um, uh, rock, I hit rock bottom, um, <laughs> with that with, dick, <laughs> with some of these guys. <laughs> My, and this is not about one person, it's about multiple people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, but, but I need to, I needed to like clean out my closet in that way. Totally. And it really actually was beautiful because it gave me a lot of clarity and I had a lot of like realizations about like what I need and what I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, and then so second part of the year, just like very minimal you know, if any the sexual interactions and, you know, and got really into the, I just in a much better place. So I just want to kind of like keep riding the spiritual wave that I am currently in the groove that I'm in where I mm. feel great and good and connected. Alfred and I, this sounds crazy, but like, I feel like I, not that I'm a, a romantic relationship with it, but I feel like Alfred and I <laughs> work on our relationship as like a, as a, I, I call him my best friend, not my son. So like as my best friend and like, even though he can't talk to me, like, I know this is weird to say, but I feel like what people talk about in marriages where they get to like newer, newer and deeper levels of understanding with each other. I feel like me and Alfred do that. I understand that. And uh, I feel like, like, just like we get to, like, we're just like at, in such like a fucking groove. That's we'll awesome. give each other a look. I'll know, like, <laughs> we we just get each other yeah. in a deep way. It's so rewarding to have that with an animal. Yeah. It's so rewarding. And I've had connections with animals. I mean, me and Pinkerton very close. Yes. As, you know, yes. even, her, you know, maybe even Pinkerton's <laughs> more mom than noticed mom. that. <laughs> Not more, but just like, yeah, yeah like, it, you know, she was very it, intimate. It's close. weird that, you know, your roommate has that, that, <laughs> that I go, deep of a bond as you do with your I go, dog. listen, P Pinkerton's one of my spirit guys, you know, he's no longer with us. I feel like he definitely is looking over me. He was so special. I always have a real deep, you know, cause even um, when I, anytime I do like a spiritual thing or a regression, you know, uh, I think some people see flower. I always see nature and I always see animals and I never see humans guiding me. Yeah, you know, totally. I, It's always animals and Nor not even- should you. It's not even necessarily animals I know, you know? Yeah. It's just animals. Like a lot of times, you know, my visions are kind of like, yeah, I don't even want to talk about them actually because, but, but yeah, it's just very animal based always. Yeah. And so, yeah, I have this- and Animals I, are the truth. Animals. I, yeah, I feel like I was working on that a lot. And I also, you know, not only my own health was I working on, we were working on Alfred's health for quite yeah. some time. Yeah. So that was, um, you know, at the forefront of my mind. And um, yeah, so keep like riding this same wave, especially, the, you know, the second half of 2023 wave into 2024. And to not so much think of it as a new year, but as a continuation of this. Like I did, I, like for the first time in a long time, I don't need a fresh start for yeah, 2024 right, and it right, feels right. really good. I don't yeah. need a fresh start. I don't, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can, can just continue to look, I can look at January 1st as just kind of a continuation. And uh, I mean, you know, I hope my career uh, does better. <laughs> I fucks with that. In 2024. Hell yeah, girl. 2024 is gonna be our year. But I'm you know? But I'm very comfortable. <laughs> That's good. That's great.
That's good. <laughs> no matter what, you know. But again, going to be disappointed if it doesn't progress better. But that's okay. I've learned how to deal with disappointment better. That's good. That's good. All right. Guys, what a time. What a time. What a time we've had. Yeah. What a year. <laughs> I think 2024 is going to be all our years. Wow. All yeah, our- I know. That's a big thing to say. Zero, right. zero deaths, zero no, breakups. No, definitely going to be deaths. Yeah. Well, the thing is- okay, You can't so avoid that. Just to touch on Kenny DeForest a little bit, because I mean, oh God, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> he has been on my mind yeah. since you texted me. Yeah. All, well, di- all the time. Well, I just, I keep thinking about him. And I don't want to pretend like we were closer friends when we, than we were. Cause I, I mean, what a, com- what a comedian move, right? <laughs> but I think what we're, see- what we're seeing with Kenny is he's one of those people that made you, us all feel really important, whether we had, you know, a mild- Whether like, we were or not. It's also like, I've known him. So even though, you know, he wasn't one of my closest friends, I've also known him for like a decade, decade. at this yeah, point. Yeah, we One of the first people- at the same time, yeah, right? In our class <laughs> of comedians, right? And so- yeah, I found myself crying multiple times over Same. his death, deeply, deeply in Chicago. I mean, that's because he where he was from. So oh, I think I felt closer right, to him there. Right, right, right. Right. And I and I had also he had just moved back to New York, so I hadn't seen him in a long time. And then I had seen him multiple times, literally a block away from me at a comedy show that happens down the street from my apartment, right? And so I had just had multiple interactions with him. Um, and that always always like makes people, you know, people like to reminisce about that. And I and I was like with all the spiritual practices that you've done this year and on all the the time that you've spent thinking about death in the past several years, like, you know, how do you come to terms with this? And quite simply, I just thought about it. It's like, we all, you know, like Michael, Michael said, like a real masterclass in the kind of life to live because comedians love talking trash. And I truly haven't heard one bad word about Kenny. No. no. Nope. And we would have heard bad words. Oh, we yeah. would have heard it. You know? I was always laughing to myself because like often when someone dies, like the first thing I do is in my head, make a list of all the other people I'd rather have seen die. (laughs) And um, (laughs) it's almost everyone. Pretty much everybody when it comes to to Kenny. Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. And so, (laughs) and then I was trying to think of like, you know, it's like, wow, no one has a bad word to say about you. So why is it you that die at 37 in a pretty horrific manner? I'm just going to come out and say in an e-bike accident that seemed pretty fucking gruesome. Right. And, but I, but I, I, then I was reading all the things that people were saying and I'm like, I honestly think it's just because his soul completed its journey yes. before us because he's better than us. Yes, I agree. I was thinking about that same thing. Cause he I was like, finished, what the fuck? He, he finished the, he finished the test early. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. done. He gets to move and on that, to something better early because he's better than us. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And, I, and I think, but it's also a more powerful thing when you, when somebody who's just lovely just fucking lovely and really funny and really kind and really just cares goes so soon. You're, you're, and while wow, to, to what you're saying, there's just all these pieces of shit walking around, just fucking living. <laughs> they have so much more healing to do yes. on their soul journey. Yes. And the impression that ca- the, when you texted me that he had passed away, mm. I like fell over. I was like, whoa, I was so shocked by it and like upset. And so, and it's because he was so lovely and great. And just my heart goes out to his family and his partner and it, oh my God. And the fucking comedy community of Chicago and New York, they're just fucking reeling right now. And LA, cause he spent a long time there too. Right, yeah, yeah cause he lived in LA for, mm-hmm. before we moved back, right? Yeah. And, uh, but I'm like, it is almost like it makes a huge, it's a powerful thing in all of our lives that mm-hmm. he went as early as he did. Mm-hmm. Like it, cause it makes you go, how do I want to be remembered? And it makes you realize that every single interaction that you have with somebody can like, make or break their day and just being Mm. like just smiling at a stranger like a genuine like hey you know smile can make somebody's whole day and he like lived in a very jesus type way when you think of jesus as like a just like a cool dude you know like a nice guy who was not judgmental and it's like wow he had this like jesus quality to him and he died young and that makes his legacy more powerful Mm. uh in a way because it's like there's something about death that's really like it's you just look at them totally different. Like they went through this thing that we're all gonna have to go through. Mm. That is, you know, scary because the human ego is terrified to die because we're wired to survive. But then you just relook at that and you just like the, the lessons that you gain from that person and from knowing that person just kind of hit in a completely different, harder way after they've passed away. It's really strange. 
Yeah, no, I was like, I was like, like I, at one point I, I, I made myself cry. Cause I was like, I wonder if Kenny ever got to have a dog. I don't know. <laughs> make myself cry again, thinking Aww. about it. But then I was like, yeah, I was like, it's just, you know, yeah. When you look at it and then of course, you know, you can't help. It's not even egotistical. It's just like the human condition. You start thinking about like, what would people say, you know, if I was the one to die and it's like, oh, a lot of people would be happy. And then I like went a step further. <laughs> you think so? Yes. But the thing is <laughs> the people who would be happy, it's not because I was mean to them. Right. It's because they were mean to themselves. It's exactly. And so I'm comfortable with that, even yeah. though that's not, that's very different would from love the it impact to not be that. that Kenny left. Kenny yeah, left. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm the, I, I go, but then why would people be happy? It's because, because I made them feel uncomfortable and I'm fine with that. And I'm not looking to change that. I think it's like when we, you know, when you make others unhappy or, or sad or angry, I think I, I don't, I don't immediately go, I don't I, stop that. Or how do I rectify that? I go, why am I making them sad or yeah. angry? And is that something I'm looking to fix? Yes. That's the question you ask. It's not, exactly. it is not inherently bad to make someone sad or angry. Right. Because a lot of times it has to do with their own insecurities and sure. problems. Like sure, sure, sure. we're all projecting most mm -hmm. of the time. So it's like who we like is a, is a projection of ourselves, and who we don't like is a projection of ourself. Yeah. It's all the same. Just like who I am on my, on the planet and my mission is I'm not, I'm not Kenny. I'm not someone who's here to make everyone feel good and happy. Yeah. And I know that. I've yeah. known that for a long time. That's not my journey, my purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we all have our own individual fucking purposes. And it's really, yeah, it's fascinating. I would like to take some of Kenny's qualities into 2024 with me. Yeah. Just kindness and patience. Yeah. And I mean, I think he, they, a lot of people kind of mentioned- uh, and this is actually similar to Suzanne Summers because her whole family has been posting, like they did a tribute to her. And like, so her son spoke and her, her partner spoke and yeah, she actually seems to share a lot of the qualities that uh, Kenny had, which oh, is like word. making you feel like you're the only person in the room, which is a, 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 a magical quality. We all know yeah. some, some people who have that. I, I do not, I don't have that quality, but I, uh, I love that. I love that quality. And it's a quality that, you know, even when you can see through it, it makes you feel good. Totally. Ashley Austin Morris has that quality. Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. She does. I wrote a joke. I was trying to write a joke about Ashley Austin Morris, like, because when I went to her, I, I felt like we had a really special connection and not that we don't, but then I went to her wedding and I was like, huh, everyone feels like they have a really special connection with fucking <laughs> yeah, Ashley. I guess she's special to everybody. I was like, you know, when you go to your friend's wedding and then you realize your friend is cheating on you and everyone <laughs> fucking feels special. But I think Kenny had that same thing. Yeah. You know? Yes. And that's why everyone feels like they lost a good friend. Not that he was, you know, it's like, yeah, we were, you know, I was like friendly. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know yeah. if I have his number in my phone, you know? Right. But it's right. just like he made, you know, he really had that quality. Just, he was a kind motherfucker, man. Yeah. Kind motherfucker. Oh, man. All right, guys. Rest in peace, Kenny. <sighs> yes. And please go uh, go to his Instagram. And if you feel so inclined, watch his comedy special. Uh, yeah. I watched it the other night and it was really good. It's called oh. Don't You Know Who I Am, streaming free on YouTube. Uh, Kenny DeForest's Instagram is K-E-N-N-Y-D-E-F-O-R-E-S-T. It made me so happy that he was able to get his, it almost, that, again, isn't that so weird that he had released a comedy special mere months before he passed away? It's almost like the universe was like, <sighs> collect your thoughts yeah. and put them out and there. Before we, before we peace yeah. out to the next realm. Yeah, I was yeah. so happy that like, from an artistic standpoint that he was able to do that. Yeah. So that we can all have that. Yeah. And he can, sh his thoughts live on. Fucking Kenny, man. His thoughts and his work. We love you, Kenny. All right. Um, all right. Well, sending you guys off into a wonderful 2024. This, thank you so much for all your support this year. We appreciate it. Be safe. Treat yourself well. Treat others well. This has been Guys We Fucked, the Anti-Slut Shaming Podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. Bye.